Have you ever wondered at which entry angle a basketball should enter the hoop to maximize your chances of getting it in? Well, if so, you're in luck because that's exactly what we're going to cover today. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. I want to first graph this problem in 3D so we build an idea of what's going on and what's our challenge here. I'm using GeoGebra, which is a free 3D graphing software, and it's very powerful and fairly easy to use. And there's decent documentations. It's very common for teachers and students to use it. The length of this graph is in the description below, so feel free to play around with this. So the first thing I want you to understand here is that the big orange sphere is the ball. The orange circle is the rim and we could come in at the rim from the top. Let's say we get rid of the ball because I don't want it to get in the way. Well, we get a full circle, right? We get the area of the rim would be pi r squared because that's the area of a circle. But now I want you to notice what happens when we come in at a different angle. Look at what shape this circle has now become. Is the rim still a circle? Yes, the rim didn't change. The physical metal of the rim did not change. It doesn't warp depending on the entry angle of the ball. What does change is from the perspective of the ball. So for example, if I come in at a, let's say 20 degree angle, if I align the center of the ball to the center of the graph here, just to get an approximate perspective, we see that the, the hoop is now an ellipse. That's a squished circle. So the area is not pi r squared anymore. It's a little bit smaller from the perspective of the, of the ball. Imagine yourself if you had a small lawn chair and you sat inside this transparent sphere and you're looking at the rim. It doesn't look like a circle, although it is in reality, right? So from the perspective of the ball, you have less area to go through. So then depending on the angle, let's say we do 45 and we move, that gives us a squash circle, but the ball would probably fit through that. So then the question is, which angle maximizes the area? Well, that's obviously 90, but maybe in basketball to shoot a 90 degree entry angle, you pretty much have to do a granny shot and shoot the ball all the way to the ceiling and then so it lands vertically downward. So that's not practical because that's biomechanically, you're gonna struggle to get those shots consistently. So there, there's a trade-off going on here. So that's what we're gonna explore further in Desmos. Simplifying the problem a little bit and going to 2D, we can look at the problem from another perspective and look at it from the side. Here, this uh, typical basketball shot, it's approximately a free throw because it's at 15 feet from the hoop. The release height is eight feet and it's a standard 10 feet rim with a nine inch ball. Look what happens when we change the angle, the release angle of the ball. So if we shoot it at 90, you see that the entry angle of the ball here is almost 90 degrees, which would result in a maximized area, but that's very impractical to shoot this ball. You need to shoot this ball at 90 feet per second approximately to get it in. And that you can imagine how that would be very difficult to do. You might even hit the ceiling. And on the other hand, if you shoot at a very flat angle, you see how tight the rim becomes from the perspective of the ball. The ball might not even be able to fit like this. I'm at 27.5 degrees of release angle. And then if you go below a certain angle, then it's for sure that it won't hit the rim at all. So there's a trade-off going on between which release angle you should shoot at. Looking at this problem from just one more perspective, and this is the perspective from being above the rim, because that way we can kind of see the area of the circle and the ellipse we were talking about for a different entry angle of the ball. So the entry angle of the ball would be from the horizontal. So for 90 degrees would be the balls coming straight down from the ceiling. 
zero degrees would be the ball's a line drive at the rim. When the entry angle is 90, you see that the perceived hoop area in green is pi r squared. It's 254 inches because I think the radius of a rim is 9 inches. So these axes here are in inches. When it's zero, the area of the perceived hoop is zero inches because you're shooting at it horizontally, the ball is going to bounce on the rim every shot. 45 degrees, that's the angle in between, would you expect the area to be 254 divided by 2, which is 127? Well, the area isn't half. In fact, the area of the perceived hoop from the ball's perspective is 180, which is 71% of the area of the initial hoop. It's not obvious which entry angle the ball should take, but what is obvious is that it's a non-linear relationship between the area of the rim and the entry angle of the ball. Most of the gains in the area of the perceived hoop are done in the first half of the entry angle from zero to 90. So for a player, it might be optimal to shoot at 45 entry angle, but anywhere in the 45 plus minus five kind of gives you a balance between not too much difficulty shooting biomechanically and having enough rim to shoot at. Ultimately, there is no perfect entry angle for a shot to go in every time. It's very dependent on the player, the shot location, in-game circumstances. But thinking about it in terms of area might help you realize that a shot that's too flat is definitely not good. And a shot with too much arc, there is diminishing returns. A lot of people think more arc is always better because you get more area, but this comes at a cost. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. The best way to support the channel at the moment is to share this video with your friends, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with Do The Work.